Hey photographers, today we're going to be talking about how to shoot as sharp as possible wildlife shots that you can get. So what I've been wanting to do is make this video for a little while now and we're going to do it in two different parts. We're going to do it in the first part here where we're actually out in the woods and what we're going to discuss are some things about how to set up your camera, techniques as far as trying to shoot with your camera, and just trying to get the best possible image out of your camera as you can. And then, you know, the second part's where we're gonna go into some, you know, editing techniques to address things that you're gonna need to deal with, like denoising or sharpening in posts. So, you know, right now I've got the Canon R6 with the Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So that's what we're gonna be using today. But this video is gonna help you no matter what gear you're using. One thing I wanna talk about is gonna be dual back button autofocus. Now, if you have like an R6 or an R5 like I do, I seriously think you should look into dual back button autofocus. And I've got another video I'm gonna post up here that goes into why I like to use dual back button autofocus. But just to simplify things for this video, it basically just maps two buttons on the back of your camera. One's gonna allow you to do spot autofocus, and the other one's gonna allow you to use your bird eye tracking autofocus and you'll be able to switch between those two types of focusing seamlessly and again if you don't have an r6 or an r5 but you just have a camera that'll allow you to set up back button autofocus i think you should do that too just because there's some serious advantages to shooting with your autofocus system hooked to a button that's separated from your shutter button when i set up my camera for shooting wildlife. I have my aperture basically set to wide open, so that's gonna be 6.3 with this lens. So I've got it to 6.3. A lot of times if there's enough available light, I'm gonna be at like probably F8, just to open up my depth of field a little bit and give me a little more leeway with my tracking system. My shutter is gonna be by default set to 1 4,000th of a second. Now with an R6, I can go up to 1 8,000th of a second. And that's going to be what's going to happen as soon as any type of real high speed action is going to be happening. But the other thing that you want to really think about is one, making sure that you don't use too high of a shutter speed when you don't need it. So a lot of people will just kind of lock themselves up at one four thousandth of a second and they won't slow that shutter speed down even when the birds are being still. They say you don't want to drop your shutter speed down below the millimeters of your focal length. So like shooting with a 400 millimeter lens, they recommend I don't go below 1 400th of a second. I can go down to like 1 60th of a second with the stabilization system and still get smooth shots, but you know, it's, it's a good little rule of thumb to kind of stick by just to keep any type of shake out of your images. And I know people hate to hear me say use auto ISO, but think about it. I mean, the one thing that you really are gonna have to focus on is gonna be your shutter speed. You know that you already want your aperture as wide open as you can so you can get as much light that you're going to need because if you're gonna be shooting at one four thousandth or one eight thousandth of a second, you're cutting your light down severely just using that really high shutter speed. So if I can shoot at 6.3, I'm going to probably shoot at 6.3. So aperture by default here is gonna be 6.3. I'd know that I'm going to manually be controlling my shutter speed depending on what's going on in the scene, what's going on action wise with my bird or whatever if we've got a full frame camera like this and we know that it can handle really decent high iso then we're just going to set that to auto iso and let the camera worry about the exposure for us then all i've got to do is focus on focusing shooting framing and i want to make sure that i'm paying attention to my shutter speed and what i'm setting it to and i'm letting the camera basically do the rest of it for me and that's one of the great things about especially the r6 being so good at high iso performance i don't really have to worry even if it creeps up to iso 12,800 or 25,600, i'll still be able to recover that in post and that's one of the great things about the r6 system now let's say you don't have a full frame camera and you're using like let's say one of canon's aps-c sensor cameras that means that it's a smaller sensor and that means that you know it's going to fall apart when you start going into higher ISOs, unlike when you're using a full frame camera. So inside of the menu, with Canon at least, you're able to just go in there and tell your camera where you want it to max out at ISO value. So if you know, you know, like let's say my girlfriend's Canon M50, that tends to start to get noisy around ISO 800, 1600, probably definitely don't want it pushing past 6400. Now, that would mean that we would go into the menu, 
and we would just set it to max auto ISO at 6400. That way, no matter what it's gonna do, it's not gonna set it above 6400. Now, that's gonna limit you a little bit when it comes to wildlife because, again, like I said, if you're gonna set your shutter speeds really high, you're going to need to get your ISO really high to make sure you get enough light onto your sensor. So you're gonna be limited depending on what the limitations are of the sensor in your camera. And that's why, you know, I really recommend using full frame cameras for wildlife, but you know, recommendations are whatever. I mean, if you've got an APS-C sensor, you're gonna be able to get awesome images with it. Again, there's just limitations that you wanna be aware of and work around. And you're gonna be able to pull off awesome images no matter what you have, as long as you kinda of know what you're doing and you just focus on some of these techniques. So we're just walking uh, down this path here. We're almost up to the top of the ridge where hopefully I'm gonna see some birds. So I'm gonna shut up and turn this camera off and I'm just gonna kinda of shoot with my camera for a little bit. Okay guys, so we're right up on the ridge. A lot of times I see red-tailed hawks, bald eagles, and kingfishers right around the corner here. So I've got the girlfriend recording me now. And again, what I've got going here is I'm gonna set it to my C1 because what I've done is I've preset everything that I want when I know I'm gonna be shooting birds or wildlife into my C1 setting. So again, I've got the dual back button autofocus system hooked right in so I can now switch between spot autofocus or bird tracking autofocus seamlessly with two buttons. I also have it set so that's gonna be a high burst rate. By default, I have it set to one four thousandth of a second, but again, that's the big thing to remember and to be focused on when we're shooting here is gonna be where do we want our shutter speed. If the bird is moving, I need it high. If it's not, we're gonna drop that down to the point that we think is reasonable to get that ISO down and get as clean of a shot as we can. Auto ISO settings. I have my ISO available to max as high as I can, but if you don't have a full frame sensor, you're gonna wanna go into your menu and set it to whatever you think is where you're comfortable your ISO going up to, you can limit that and then basically do the same thing. I'm gonna have my aperture set to 6.3. Sometimes I will go to maybe eight. That's just again to open depth of field and allow a little bit of leeway and focusing. But more or less, if we're gonna be shooting action, I'm gonna be shooting wide open. So I'm gonna be at 6.3 aperture. All I'm really actively thinking about is again, focusing, framing, and paying attention to where my shutter speed needs to be. So let's go ahead, guys. Belly's woodpecker. We got two of them. So again, like right now, I've got two little red-bellied woodpeckers just kind of flying around up in the trees. I'm not really gonna use bird tracking because it's really busy. There's a lot of leaves, a lot of branches. It's probably not gonna work, so I'm just relying on spot autofocus right now. And that's the beauty of the dual system here. One eight hundredth of a second, that's allowed my ISO to drop down to 160. Stabilization can totally handle that. So that's what you want to be thinking about when you're shooting something like this is, okay, this bird isn't actually moving when I'm shooting. I'm gonna drop my shutter speed down. I'm gonna allow my ISO to back off. I'm gonna get a nice clean image. Once that bad boy jumps in the air and starts flying around fast, crank that shutter speed, let the ISO go where it needs to go and see if we can recover that in post or not. But that's basically how I'm thinking when I'm shooting with the type of setup that I'm trying to describe to you guys. Okay guys, so you've been outside, you were shooting with your camera, you were trying to implement some of those things we were talking about earlier in the video, you got your shutter speed right, you got your ISO set right, you're pretty sure that you got some really nice images, and now it's time to take them home and try to edit them on your computer. 
Now, hopefully you were shooting in RAW, because when it comes to wildlife, it's really important that you have the maximum amount of flexibility in post. And that's going to require that you shot in RAW, because JPEG really throws away a lot of data. So we want to be taking our RAW images, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using Adobe, and we're going to use Bridge, Camera Raw, and Photoshop. And we're also going to use some software made by Topaz Labs, and that's going to be Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, so what I have here is I have two images that I have. I've got one of a hawk and one of a wren here. So what, let's start with the hawk image. So we're in Adobe Bridge right now, and this is just how you basically look through your files. Now what we're gonna do is just right click on the image, and we're gonna go to Open in Camera Raw. Now what that's gonna do is just open it up into Camera Raw software, and we're gonna do a couple of things at this stage. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check the profile here, and we're going to see if there's one that we like a lot. Now, I tend to gravitate to landscape because I just really like how the landscape profile adds the contrast and the colors in, and it kind of basically gets me right to a point where I want to be. So it's a good starting point for me, so I'm going to stick with landscape, but this is just preference. You might like neutral or portrait or standard or vivid, so you can go ahead and play with any of those. Now, the reason we select that now is because the process that I do, we're going to lose the ability to set these profiles after this. So you want to make sure you set your profile. You also want to go and check your white balance. Now, you know, if you're happy with it, you can stick with it. I'm going to check auto. Auto gives me like kind of a golden brown type of a setting here, and I like that. So I'm going to stick with auto on white balance. Now we're not going to make any changes here yet. And what we're going to do now is just make sure that in optics tab, we're going to make sure that we have the remove chromatic aberration and we have the profile corrections applied, right? You want to make sure that you have the profile correction for the right lens that you used. In this case, it's the Tamron 100-400. And again, the chromatic aberration is applied. So you want to have those two things applied in the optics tab. You want to have the white balance set to where you like it and you want to have the profile set to where you like it. Once you have those things set up, we're going to go ahead and hit open. And what that's going to do is take us out of Camera Raw and take us into actual full-on Photoshop. Okay, so we're in Photoshop now. And what we're going to do first is we're going to denoise and sharpen it with Denoise AI. So what we're going to do is just go to Filter, and we're going to go to Topaz Labs, and we're going to go to Topaz Denoise AI. So that's just going to open this image right up into Topaz Denoise AI. So we're going to go into the Denoise AI software, and we're gonna zoom right in on our subject. Now, the reason that we didn't make any of those other changes, like to our exposure or anything, is according to Topaz, you wanna do the denoising first, so that way we don't enhance any of the noise that might be there. So, first thing we're gonna do is just zoom in on the actual subject, which is gonna be the bird, right? So we're gonna go right to the bird here, and we're gonna go ahead and, I do denoise AI most of the time, um, again, low light is going to be so if you don't want to add any sharpening at all, but I do. AI clear is kind of like a more dumbed down, just a few different settings that you can tweak. And denoise AI is the one that also has sharpening built into it and denoising, but it gives you a little more customizable control over it. So I like denoise AI. So auto here says remove noise at 3, enhance sharpness at 48. I'm going to change that just because I've used this software quite a bit. Now I'm going to bring the remove noise up to 8, and I'm going to do enhanced, you know, I'm going to do remove noise up to 10, and I'm going to do enhanced sharpness at 25, okay, and I'm going to hit update, and we're just going to see what that looks like. So what we're going to do is just take this and we're going to swipe across, and as you see, it sharpened it up really nicely, and it also got rid of any of the granular patterning that you saw in the back here, so it's denoising it nicely, and we've got some really nice sharpening results. Look at it in the face in the chest and in the wings there. Look at how much sharper that looks. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. That's gonna apply these settings to the image and it's just gonna pull us right back into Photoshop. Now this will happen faster or slower depending on the speed of your computer itself. So you do wanna have kind of a beefy computer for this software, it can be a little bit resource intensive. It's gonna open us right back up into Photoshop here. And now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to crop on my image. So I'm going to hit C, and we're going to crop the living daylights right out of this image here. So bring it down. I'm going to level it out with the horizon here, just a little bit. And 
that. Let's crop it like crazy. Okay, that makes me happy. Boom. Okay, so we just cropped in like crazy now. So let's go to filter, and we're going to go to camera raw filter, and that's going to pull us back to camera raw. Now I'm going to show you, like I said in the very beginning here, the reason that we set um, the profiles is you no longer have options for those profiles, so that's why we chose the landscape profile for myself in the beginning, because they're no longer available. And you do still have the availability to do as shot and auto with uh, your white balance, but those other ones are gone. So that's why I like to do white balance and profile at the very beginning stage. Then I go to denoising with the AI software, and then I come back to here. And this is where I'm going to do things like, let's try to recover some shadow detail. Now, the R6 files are very good at shadow recovery, but after you've denoised it, you're going to notice that you have really good abilities to just recover those shadows. So let's check it out. We're going to bring the shadows up. And look at that detail that's just going to come right back into the face. And I'm up to, you know, 80, and that's crazy, but it looks fine. And I've brought all that detail back into the face here. Um, maybe add a touch of contrast, maybe just a touch of vibrance, and maybe I'll bring the blacks down just a hair, minus one. Okay, so a couple of little tweaks here and there. I think I will bring the highlights. The highlights I'm going to pull back just a hair. Okay, and let's take a look at how that looks. And that looks pretty good, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That's going to bring me right back into Photoshop, and now you see that we've recovered that. Now, if you wanted to take this one step further, let's do a mask, actually. So what I'm going to do is hit Filter. I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter again, so I'm going back into Camera Raw Filter. And let's create a mask. So that's that tab over here. We're going to hit that. And, oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually going to zoom in first. We're going to zoom in way in on this bird's eye. And then we're going to create a mask, we're going to grab the brush, and we're just going to highlight just the eye of this bird here. So we're going to get the eye, boom, and then I'm just going to lift that exposure by one stop. So we're going to go up all the way one stop, boom, and that's going to make me happy. Okay, so we're done with that, go back to the normal um, editing tab here, and we're going to go right to it. And that just lifts the eye a little bit. So again, we can just hit OK, brings us right back to Photoshop again. And more or less, I would be happy at this point because it looks really nice and it looks sharp enough. But let's go ahead and sharpen it too. We're going to hit Filter, Topaz Labs, and go to Topaz Sharpen AI. So same thing. We're now going to open this image up into Sharpen AI software. And the first thing I want to show you here is how to create a mask. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the subject one more time here. And we're going to go down to the Mask tab here. And it's going to try to find the subject for you automatically, so give it a second to do that. It's hit or miss with this, so okay, so it's got some options. I'm going to choose bird. It did pretty good with that. I might add just a little bit on the tail here, but we're more or less happy with that. So I'm going to go down and click edge aware, and that's going to make it, you know, aware of the edges of the subject. Okay, and we're going to hit apply mask. So now the sharpening is only going to take place on the bird itself. Now... You have three options here. You have motion blur, you have out of focus, and you have too soft. Now, motion blur and out of focus are pretty aggressive, but these results are pretty decent with the motion blur, actually. Um, as you can see, it's sharpening up right in that wing and also in the face itself. Now, there is a little bit of what looks like degradation to the image here, but we're zoomed way in on the image. So remember, we're gonna be looking at the end result of this. So, it probably wouldn't look that bad, but let's take a look. What is Too Soft going to look like? So, I'm just going to click Too Soft. Now, again, I've got the Auto tab here selected, and it's done Remove Blur of 71, Suppress Noise of 22. So, let's just go ahead and take a look what Too Soft looks like. And as you can see, Too Soft is still sharpening that image, but it's not as aggressive. But I have to say, I might like Motion Blur's results a little bit better. So I'm going to stick with Motion Blur here, um, and again, that's what it's like with this software. You kind of just test it, see what it looks like. You have Motion Blur, Out of Focus, or Too Soft. You have three levels of varying degrees of aggressiveness for this software. So you also can do Auto or make the changes yourself. So I'm going to stick with Motion Blur um, with Remove Blur at 35, Suppress Noise at 25. I'm going to hit Apply, 
And again, that's just going to apply those sharpening um, changes to this image, and then it's going to bring us right back into Photoshop when it finishes. Now again, this happens quicker or faster based on how strong your computer is. Okay guys, and that looks pretty good. I mean, it's looking nice and sharp. There's really no noise to say in the background here. So I'm actually really happy with this image. So again, what we've done is we've gone and looked through the files with Bridge. We opened it into Camera Raw. Then after we made our couple of initial tweaks there, we went into Photoshop. From Photoshop, we went and used the Topaz Denoise and Sharpening AI. And then we went and made our final exposure changes again in Camera Raw. At this point, I'm happy with how the image looks, so what I would do is just go to File, Save As, and I would just export it out as either a PNG or JPEG file, whatever I wanted to do, and boom, we're done. So let's go back to Bridge, and let's check out the Ren. So again, we're in Bridge, I'm going to hit right click, open in Camera Raw, pulls me right into Camera Raw. We're going to do Landscape, because I like Landscape, but you can play with it and see if you like other ones, you know, you might get better results with different images on different profiles. I just happen to like Landscape. I'm not going to make any big changes to uh, the exposure or colors or anything. We are going to check out the white balance. And I actually do like Auto here, I like that golden brown that it's adding, so I'm going to stick with Auto. We're going to go to the Optics tab, make sure we have Remove Chromatic Aberration and Use Profile Corrections checked and make sure that we have the, the right profile for the right lens that we used. Once we've done that, we're going to go down and hit Open. That's going to bring us to actual Photoshop again. So once this image is in Photoshop, we can now denoise and sharpen it. So we're just going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and Topaz Denoise AI. That's going to open us right up into the Denoise AI software. So we're already pretty zoomed in, so let's take a look. So I'm going to do Auto, and Remove Noise 2, Enhance Sharpness 39. Um, I'm going to change that. We're going to do Remove Noise 8, Enhance Sharpen 20, and I'm going to hit Update. That's going to generate the preview for us. Once the preview's been generated, we can now swipe across the image and see what it looks like. So I can see the very minor amount of noise that's in the background is being dealt with, so it's denoising it nicely. You know, this might not be the best image, it looks like the focus missed the eye of the bird a little bit, but that's okay, we're just showing you how to process here. Now, you can see that it's sharpened up a little bit, and maybe it's a good thing that we've missed focus a little bit, because that's going to give the sharpening software a real good chance to see what it can do for us. So I'm overall happy with that, so I'm going to hit apply, and again, just applies the changes. Once this bakes into that, it's going to pull us right back into Photoshop, and then we're going to go ahead and sharpen this. Okay guys, so once we get back into Photoshop and it's been denoised, we're going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and we're going to go to Sharpen AI. So let's see what it can do. So since I said, like, this is a little out of focus, so let's try out of focus, Auto. Now we want to create a mask, right? So I'm going to do Mask. It's going to try to auto detect the subject, so let's see if it finds the bird. Again, very hit or miss. Okay, so we're going to click Bird. And it did get the bird, so we're going to just hit Edge Aware, Apply Mask, and now it won't sharpen anything except for this bird. So let's see what it's doing here. Okay, so it is sharpening the subject up pretty well, really. Um, but if you look down here in the feathers and towards the edge, notice that you're getting a lot of red. Kind of like weird noise, chromatic aberration. And that's the problem with the AI software, is this can be hit or miss, okay? Certain images are going to work better than others, and that's where you got to kind of play with things. So we're going to take the auto off, we're going to do suppress noise, let's try 35. Let's back remove blur off a little bit to like, let's say 50, and let's let it update that preview. Okay, there we go, let's see what we got. So, swiping across, still noticing some weird noise under the eye, red here by the stomach. Okay, so in this case, you know, you can go and try to play with it more. Let's try very... Mm, let's try too soft. Too soft, I generally have the best results with, so let's try remove blur at 40, suppress noise at 20, let it generate that preview. Now again, I've always noticed too soft, again, to be the least aggressive form of the software, and it generally gets me the best results because it, it's a really aggressive software sometimes, so take a look at that. Again, minimal sharpening really happening here, not a lot, 
but it is sharpening and it's not giving me those undesirable you know aberrations that we were getting so I'm gonna stick with that and hit apply so it's gonna apply that again this was a scenario where this software didn't really pull through for me and that's okay I mean it's a hit or miss type of a thing but a lot of times it can really help you with images especially the denoise software I definitely use the denoise software on 90% of my images um, the sharpening again can be a little more hit and miss but it can really really help images as well so don't neglect trying it out one of the great things about this software is it gives you a 30 day free trial so you can try it out and see if you like it okay and then you know remember you're zoomed in on these images when you're previewing them so a lot of times when you go ahead and apply those those end results look really nice like even though it might have missed the focus slightly on the eye overall the image looks really nice so I'm happy with that so again I would just go to file and I would just export this out and we'd be good to go. Okay guys, so I hope that this helped you a little bit. If it did, maybe think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.